Let's dive into some Pittsburgh Steelers talk here. Are they not going to draft a quarterback? This comes to us from one John Clayton who says they're not going to do it. It doesn't make sense. And on one hand, I agree. Like, you're trying to win with Big Ben right now, and drafting a quarterback objectively does not help them unless Big Ben gets hurt or gets benched, which, again, I mean, is going to happen. Of course, also looking ahead long term, the options aren't that great. Anyway, here's what John Clayton had to say when asked about Pittsburgh drafting a quarterback. When something they've done before, remember. No, they want to win now. You worry about the quarterback position later. They've got Ben Roethlisberger. They have a young quarterback in Dwayne Haskins. They have two other quarterbacks. So I think it would be almost useless to do something like that. Now, he's right. Big Ben is the starter. His time is limited. We, we, we should all know that by now that Big Ben's got like eh, one, maybe two more years left maximum there. Mason Rudolph, a former mid-round pick, is still on the team. Joshua Dobbs, another former mid-round pick, is also still on the team. Dwayne Haskins was signed. If we're being honest here, the odds are those three guys ain't it. And for years, Pittsburgh has spent Day two, day three picks on a potential Big Ben heir. And it has not worked out, period. And then you look at this year's draft crop. The, the, the guys available for Pittsburgh, look, if Justin Fields is there at 24, oh my God, you take him. It's not going to happen. So day two, day three, you're looking at Davis Mills out of Stanford, who some people like him. I don't see it. Kyle Trask reminds me of Mason Rudolph all over again. Why would I take him? Kellen Mond, he does have upside. He's been a four-year starter, though, and is still not accurate. Is something going to change? I kind of think the answer is no. Jamie Newman also has upside, but, like, he opted out and didn't play and was bad at the Senior Bowl. Like, I got a round six grade on him. And then it's, like, Ian Book and Sam Ellinger, those backup guys on day three, like, round seven grades for me. Like, what's the point? So I do believe that quarterback is a significant need for this team because Big Ben, he looked bad down the stretch. They don't have a future franchise guy there. But if your commitment is to win with what you currently have, if that is your goal, if you are focused on trying to win for one more year with Big Ben, I agree with Clayton. At that point, it does not make sense for them to go out and try and add a quarterback early because the options aren't great. So if I'm Pittsburgh, I focus on offensive tackle, running back, corner, other spots as opposed to quarterback and try and find my future franchise guy in 2022 or even later than that going forward. Let's talk more Pittsburgh Steelers here. Some possible draft plans as it relates to the offensive line. Now, the SB Nation site, Steel Curtain, or, uh, suggested maybe they don't go tackle early. And, man, I got to be honest here. Like, that doesn't make the most sense to me in terms of what they really should be doing in terms of the, the offensive line. They did not have a particularly great unit last year. And I think at some level, Alejandro Villanueva is no longer the same guy that he was in his prime. I think, to be honest here, the decline had begun to set in at least a little bit there. But you look at what they have on their actual roster. I don't think it's great. Um, I Frankly, I'm a bit disappointed about it. Like, I, I think the interior stuff is fine. David DeCastro, Kevin Dotson, that's a pretty good one-two punch there. Avante Collins isn't bad either. B.J. Finney, J.C. Hassenauer could maybe help you survive at center if you, if you had to. But when you look at the tackle spot, a core four has been bad, if we're being honest here. Joe Haig, Rashad Coward, those guys aren't great by any stretch of the imagination. Zach Banner could be a guy at right tackle also coming off of injury. I don't trust Chucks at left tackle. So if I were Pittsburgh, I'd be drafting somebody early. So make your votes here. What do you want to do? Should the Steelers draft a tackle early. Get your votes in for me right now before we look at some options for them. Type one for yes or type zero for no. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. 
Now in round one, if either Christian Derisaw or Tevin Jenkins are on the board, folks, I am sprinting to the podium. Like, that would be a home run pick for Pittsburgh. In the end, I think they're both gone. Which means Samuel Cosme, Alex Leatherwood, Liam Eikenberg, those are probably your next best names. I wouldn't be stunned, be a bit of an upset, but I wouldn't be that stunned if one of those guys fell to you in round two. But that's maybe a bit of a reach. So if you let, maybe you take Najee Harris, as has been heavily discussed and mentioned and rumored about for weeks now. Maybe he's your round one pick. If so, I'd like to draft somebody in round two at tackle or even interior offensive line to, to, uh, at center. Jalen Mayfield, I have flipped. I think he's a guard. I mm, he, he wasn't he wasn't great testing. I'm a bit concerned there. Dylan Radins, Brant, uh, Bra uh Brady Christensen, I'm actually kind of intrigued by that one, though. Spencer Brown, if you want to gamble on the upside, great athlete. Like, that. that's, that's an I I I intriguing player there if you are the Pittsburgh Steelers. And then there's also Walker Little, who I am concerned about, but if you're picked over, you want to get a left tackle, that could certainly be a path for Pittsburgh in day two.